It was one of the worst disasters in football history. 56 people died when flames tore through a wooden stand at Bradford City's stadium in 1985. Martin Fletcher was just 12 years old at the time when he escaped unharmed, but he lost three generations of his family. His brother Andrew was just 11. He also lost his father John, his grandfather Eddie and his uncle Peter. In his book, Martin claims there were at least eight other fires over the previous 18 years of businesses owned by or connected to Bradford City's then chairman, Stafford Higginbottom, which he says should have prompted further investigation. Mr Higginbottom was never prosecuted and he died 20 years ago. His family say the accusations are ridiculous. An inquiry concluded the fire was probably started accidentally by a discarded cigarette which fell through gaps in the stand and ignited rubbish below. The judge who led the inquiry at the time says he stands by his ruling. Obviously at the time we would have looked into it and um, but I suspect that if there had been eight previous fires of which no one had made any complaint as far as we know, um, one would have said, well, it, it, you know, coincidences happen. West Yorkshire Police say they'll investigate any new evidence that has emerged. Martin came in to speak to me earlier about his claims. Martin, welcome to Five News tonight. Thank you. What do you remember about that day? Because it was 30 years ago now. I remember everything as vividly as it happened yesterday, and I was well. And I realise that whenever I see war veterans interviewed, 70, 60, 70, 80 years hence, that that is something which will live with me so vividly till the day I die, as it did for it. so many people there that day. Still uh, raw? Because you escaped onto the pitch mm -hmm. where your younger brother at the time, he was only 11, your dad, your uncle, your granddad didn't. Yeah, um, they never made it out of the rear corridor. It's remarkable that I did. 43 people died within a 10 yard radius of me. I had one cry for help. It's incredible that you survived that day and it's also incredible you still feel that sense of injustice now. If I'd have died, and I almost certainly probably should have done, I would want the truth and the facts to be out there about how I had died. Mm. And that would be the most fundamental thing to me if I put myself in that position. And having come so, so close to it, I think I'm the one person who is able to put themselves in that position mm -hmm. and able to actually make that judgment call. Lord Popplewell chaired an inquiry into it that found it was basically an accident, a cigarette or something like that fell between the floorboards of that stand that was due to be demolished anyway and lit rubbish that had accumulated underneath. You don't believe that's the case there? Um, at this minute, I'd rather not be drawn on that. I'd rather people look at the facts in the book I've written, make their own mind up upon those facts. And the accusations in the book, though, are levelled at the chairman uh, that time, uh, Higginbottom, and you think he'd been involved in several fires before this one, and that, in some way, I know you won't be drawing it, but points the finger at him being involved in this? The allegations are facts, verifiable facts, which have actually been in the public domain since this morning, um, and there's a mountain of coincidence. Um, just Sir Oliver Popperwell used the word coincidence. He seems to be suggesting that perhaps there should be another look at those fires by the police, and um, we'll see. Um, at this minute, I can't see how the two can't be connected. Put them out there now. I know you want people to, to digest them, to come up with their own views. What would you like to see happen, ultimately? Um, that's a good question. Again, I, I do question the practicalities of doing a conventional inquiry system 30 years hence. However, if there is one good thing which could come out of it, is that we could perhaps look at ensuring that remits cannot be restricted for political reasons and mm. political Public objectives. inquiries, you mean? They think they're yeah, too narrow, that we actually, they should be broader from that, now on. That we have a set kind of regulations which actually allow us to respect both the rule of law rather than have the Home Secretary set a remit and also the separation of powers, which is fundamental to any functioning and healthy democracy. And that has ramifications not just for sporting tragedies, but everything is particularly pertinent right now. Every tragedy. So actually, we do have greater deterrent so that we don't have people a generation on, like the Hillsborough campaigners and like myself, having to come in and bring these injustices to light 30 years on. 
Martin Fletcher, many thanks. Thank you, Matt.